renewable energy technologies to combat climate change. At about 70% of the total energy used in Kenya, biomass fuel, which includes firewood, charcoal and crop residue, is the largest form of primary energy. Some studies have shown that rather than decrease the overall energy consumption of biomass energy, in proportion to other energy forms, has actually increased in the past two decades. The high cost of electricity and petroleum products, such as paraffin and liquid petroleum gas, mean that most people in Kenya, and indeed in the rest of sub-Saharan Africa, will continue to rely heavily on wood. For fuel. At the domestic level, the search for firewood is a task that is borne especially by women and children, who have to walk long distances with the heavy loads. Charcoal, which is mainly consumed by households in urban areas, both in the formal and informal settlements is produced in traditional kilns, which are highly inefficient and which result in the extensive destruction of trees and the surrounding vegetation. Sometimes unattended charcoal kilns cause fires in forests and wooded drylands. More than 90% of the institutions in Kenya, including schools, hospitals and hostels, use firewood to cook and heat water. Most of the wood supplied to institutions is harvested unsustainably and results in significant environmental damage and loss of habitats for wildlife. The wood is harvested in bulk from the logging of mature trees including indigenous and threatened species. The impacts of climate change are increasingly being felt, with the country experiencing more frequent and severe droughts and floods, this is in turn resulting in wood becoming more and more scarce, therefore more expensive. The search for energy-efficient technologies to meet the needs for cooking and heating at the domestic and institutional level is aimed at climate change mitigation through a reduction in the amount of greenhouse gases produced. Efficient technologies also make communities better able to adapt to the impacts of climate change, due to a reduction in the amount of firewood they need to meet their cooking needs. The traditional three-stone fireplace uses a lot of firewood and produces significant amounts of smoke, which is harmful to the health of the cooks. Tree planting efforts result in communities and schools having a steady supply of fuel wood and reduce their impact on critical areas of biodiversity conservation, such as forests and fragile drylands. From his humble beginnings in Neri, Charles Gatewander has made a significant contribution towards finding local, indigenous and innovative technologies to address the pressing problems of climate change and appropriate renewable energy technologies. My name is Charles Mwangige Tundu. I am from uh, Nyeri. When my father went into detention, uh, that was just before I, got, I was born, I found the remnant of the riches that the old man had established, but immediately after, it kind of started uh, becoming worse. My mother was married as a second wife, and the, the first wife of my father passed on, leaving my mother to take care of the rest of the family for the two homes. In, in, in Thika High School, I made a deliberate decision to quit from five and six and join Polytechnics because at, we had a lot of financial problems then. And fortunately, immediately on completion, Akea International went looking for somebody to employ. As a management advisor, they were given my name. In 1981, there was the UN, renewable, uh, UN Conference New and Renewable Sources of Energy held at KICC. And out of interest I decided to go see what is happening in the area of renewable energy because it was a new terminology. I joined people like Max Wokinyajui and a lady called Dr. Agnes Krinchikin of, of GTZ. We can single-heartedly claim to have 
initiated uh, and Kengo to have initiated the improved stove technology in Kenya, mainly the Kenya ceramic stove. Uh, Kengo got, got a funding from Appropriate Technology International of the, of the US and that money was to be used to help initiate production units and facilitate the KCJ uptake by different communities across the country. I joined Kengo as the stoves project manager and I, I took all the stuff that I had in Nyarenda all the way to Mukurwene, continued research, dis design and development, but this time now I started expanding my operations to cover institutional and commercial stores. There was uh, this conference in Nairobi to mark the 25th years of Kenya's independence in 1988. I participated in that. I exhibited the various products that I had developed then. I scooped the gold medal for excellence in indigenous energy innovations. That was a very important starting point because getting a gold medal, beating all those other players, signaled to me that what I was doing and the, the way my RD and D was taking me was in the right direction. Immediately after that, I took a one year annual leave and got into serious design and development. And that is how you find today we have the kind of range of improved stoves that you not find anywhere else. Not that we have refused to pass on the technology to other people, but because the technology has just recently matured and been tested for efficiency and every other aspect. But the most important testing, as you, most people may well know, are the acceptance by the end users, because that is what, that's the important test. And also durability, because if you make something that, because our products are expensive, that have that cannot withstand the, the test of time, it is futile. Okay, I'm John Keko, head teacher in Bash. Uh, I'm very happy to receive you at our kitchen here. This is our kitchen. Uh, last year, uh, we were actually using uh, an open fire. But now we are very happy that we have received uh, this from your team that is Improved Jiko. Uh, it is actually good technology. Now that we have installed, we have actually uh, got uh, uh, so many advantages compared to what we used to have earlier. Uh, what an available to me, Lady Jugo. They sit die, can get in Kitty and get a wingy pro dog. Now, it may have sick with the equity, Miss Kumu. I'm a Tom Etaya, senior teacher and Rumeti Primary School. I'm in charge of the school feeding program. I keep the record and also uh, forward information where necessary. Now, where we are now is the old kitchen. We have been using the three stone kitchen uh, before we received the energy saving Jiko, and it was a bit hectic in that uh, there were so many problems which were arising due to the use of this uh, three stone Jikos uh, or this uh, method of cooking. Now, after we have received the energy saving Jiko, we are now working at a health or a conducive environment for food. Because we are in an area where it is a bit remote and therefore as people come along, they just pick one or two for a day. So now it has now spaced the days in which we can collect this firewood. And therefore the small particles you have seen outside there are now the ones that are enough for the day. And uh, for tomorrow we might collect the same amount as you have seen there, which will now uh, serve for tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. The perception people have is that these jikos, because they use uh, firewood, they are meant for the poor schools. And that is a very wrong perception. These jikos are used by schools, any, all types of schools, institutions, is because they cost less to operate. They're energy efficient, and these savings are translated into, they are, they are, they are, they are transmitted to their students, so they pay less fees. There are lots of high-class schools, uh, teachers training colleges, they all use it for the simple basic reason that it is energy efficient and is cost effective. Okay, I'm uh, Mrs. Mulwa, a teacher, Kilesha Primary. And uh, actually we are very happy about the energy saving GCOS which were installed in our school by Rural Technology Enterprise. And uh, since the GCOS were installed, we've uh, seen a lot of benefits because the firewood that we are using uh, is very little. You can even use about uh, about four to three uh, 
stumps of firewood and it cooks it cooks food it doesn't have uh, much smoke uh, i can say they are good they are good they are even easy to clean because after cooking food does not stick on them they are easy to use and manage we started by using the open fire decoys although they were the energy savings that were not properly done and we had requested WFP if they could assist us in a way so they built for us a kitchen and the rural technology installed two energy saving decoys so far the benefits of those decoys is the energy saving because the firewood that we used for um, for two weeks we are using it now for a whole term and the decoys are clean there is no smoke in the kitchen cleanness is enhanced and they are cooking very fast we like them very much and we would encourage anybody else to use those energy saving decoys gate wando established the rural technology enterprises rte as a private business in the early 1980s ungiririkana riko ria mbere ria ku design ria ria three bana me mutu ndani uraririkana ginyo ria tutari mwaki kogwo ona guchina kindu rechiria ria rioka tutiahota kurithondekera hau no mwaka uyu kana ben kana whoever akue mabati macia tware kilomita akuidano twathia kilomita ikumi kia hungu nigetha uhurirwo sport na muthuri yaka gogo no aririkana eta gote kimondo au tugetara uhedero thite kilomita icio ciothe ikumi to produce and supply energy efficient stoves ranging from the kenya ceramic stove or jikos kcj to institutional and commercial stoves gate wondo and his colleague nicolas mwang he remember the early days when they were struggling with various designs of stoves and the challenges they faced including lack of tools that meant they had to walk almost 10 kilometers to get basic welding services collaboration with others he later established the renewable energy technology assistance program retap a non-governmental organization to manage a revolving fund credit scheme to assist communities and institutions purchase stoves to meet their unique needs the group the global environment facility uh, small grants program which is managed by UNDP were the first people to support our cause and even finally GEF the global environment facility uh, supported a medium sized project again which was implemented by UNDP country office here WFP has been collaborating with Retap to supply energy saving stoves the schools in marginalized communities in informal urban settlements and in arid and semi-arid areas retap also promotes and supports the planting of trees in schools and institutions which can provide them with a reliable supply of fuel wood for their cooking and heating needs with proper care and maintenance energy saving stoves can provide institutions with years of service and savings on fuel wood in clean and healthy kitchens that are a pleasure to work in Efficient biomass stoves are one clear strategy for climate change adaptation and mitigation.